Hello, it's Keith here and this is lesson 31 of the platform specific series of my Z80 programming tutorials. Now we looked last week at how to do hardware sprites on the Game Boy. We're going to continue doing hardware sprites and this time we're going to look at the Sega Master System and the Game Gear and because they're quite simple we're also going to look at the MSX1. Now coincidentally the SMS and Game Gear are actually backwards compatible with the Master System 1 but the way the sprites work is actually very different so that's purely coincidence as far as this lesson is concerned. But what is the same is that they both by default use 8x8 sprites. So the sprite we're going to use today is this 16 by 16 crosshair, but it's actually made of four different sprites. And you can tell because I've actually coloured them differently on this example below. Now, of course, as we've said before, the Game Gear and the Master System are basically the same hardware and the principles for sprites are identical on both. So let's have a look at what we're actually going to be doing today. So let's start on the Sega Master System and the Game Gear. So how do we do sprites on these systems? Well, it's very straightforward. There is an area of the video memory starting from 3F00 and this defines the Y position, the X position and the number of the tile pattern used to make up the sprite. The sprites are always 8x8 and unfortunately on the Game Gear and the Master System we don't have any flipping options so we can't make our sprites turn around. So if we need a character that can face in the opposite direction we're going to need a second sprite. In these examples the tile numbers are going to relate to the tile map but it is possible to use a second bank of data for the sprites that is not used by the tile map. So if you're doing a very large game, you would want to do that. It's also possible for the sprites and the tile map to use a separate set of colors. Both are 16 entries, but it's possible to have two different color banks, one for the tile map of 16 colors and one for the sprites of 16 colors. But again, today's example is actually gonna use the same colors for both. Both of these options are set within the mode registers, but we're not gonna look at them today. We're just gonna look at the bare basics of getting sprites to screen. And what does that take? Well, first we need to set the Y coordinate and there is one byte for this set from 3F00 to 3F3F and these are the Y coordinates. Now when it comes to the X coordinate and the tile number, these are to a different memory position and it's rather strange the layout of this because we've got a single byte relating to the sprite here but at this address 3F80 we have two bytes. We have the X coordinate and then immediately following it the N coordinate. So that's a rather odd layout for a single sprite because you can see in black here, sprite 0 is defined by this byte here and these two bytes here. Of course, the bitmap data that makes up the sprite is it within the tile definitions, as I said before. So that's how we do it. Very straightforward. Now, we've worked with VDP memory before and we use like, this prepare VRAM command and we're going to use that again. So what that does is it takes an address and it sends that to the hardware via the out command and then any bytes we out will be written to the address we prepared with. So that's how we actually write data to this sprite attribute table. So let's take a look at that. Now the sprite we created today is created with Aku Sprite Editor which is my free sprite editor, free and open source and we can just export to it to Sega Master System and Game Gear just using the raw bitmap option because as I said before the sprites and the tile map use the same data format. So the, the actual data that puts the sprites onto the screen is the same as on the Game Boy. We're going to use this set hardware sprite command and we're going to send a pattern number, a sprite number and also an X and Y. This, this line doesn't actually do anything in this case. And as for the sprite data itself, all we've done is we've actually tagged it on to the end of our tile definition before. So it's literally part of the tile map. And what about the actual code that does the work for us? Well, here it is. So this set hardware sprite command does all of the work. Now, what we need to do first is we need to set that first byte in this area here. And because each sprite has a single byte, if we've got the sprite number in A, we just load L with A and set H to 3F, and that will be the correct position for that Y coordinate. So we then load in the Y coordinate after we've prepared the VRAM with that address and we just send it to the VDP and it will be written to the correct memory address, for example, Y0 here. So now we need to do the other two. Now there's two bytes per sprite, so we actually need to double A and we do that by RLCA here. Then we add L to hexadecimal 80 and we need to set H to 3F again here. And so now we will be pointing at the bytes within this range here. So next we write our X position and our tile number. Of course, all the work is being done by this prepare VRAM function here, which is actually selecting the memory address by outing it to the ports. So that's really all it takes. As I said before, the sprite is actually made up of four different sprites, which is why we can make a 16 by 16 sprite on a system that can only do eight by eight sprites. Now the, the system is capable of 60, 
four sprites, but I believe only 10 can be on a single line. So if you don't know the way it works, the hardware is dynamically repositioning the hardware sprites using this table, but it's got a physical limit of how much you can draw within a single line. So you do have to maybe limit yourself a little bit there, but it's still a very good set of features on the Sega Master System and Game Gear, especially the Game Gear with that much smaller screen. Now, of course, we can just reposition our sprite using this data here. So if I make a much smaller exposition here, you can see the sprite has now moved to the left. So we've got real, a lot of real control there, and that's gonna give us some very good potential for sprites on the Master System and the Game Gear. Now, the MSX has much more limited sprites for the MSX1, they're just two colors. They are eight by eight or 16 by 16. They can only be up to 32 on the screen, but there is a limit of just four on a single line. So very limited, but still, you know, perfectly interesting and a lot of potential to them. So each sprite is defined by four bytes. The first is a Y coordinate. Second is an X coordinate. The third is a pattern number, but this isn't the patterns within the normal tile data on the MSX. And then we have a color number as well. Color will be zero to 15. And there's a special top bit which allows you to clip a sprite so that it's half off the left-hand side of the screen. Because the coordinates are zero to 256, it wouldn't be possible to have a negative coordinate that would allow a clipped sprite on the left-hand side. And the top bit of the color actually shifts the sprite 32 pixels to the left, allowing for clipping on the left-hand side. With Y coordinates, you can have a negative coordinate because if you've if you go over 212, it won't be shown on the screen anyway, because the maximum screen size on an MSX is 212, and it's actually usually 192. So that's how we can do our clipping, and those are the options we have here. So X, Y, pattern and color for every sprite. And of course, unlike the rather annoying layout of the Sega Master System, the MSX is a very neat format indeed. We have four consecutive bytes for each sprite. Again, these are held within the VDP memory, so we need to out these to the VDP memory, but we are using memory addresses 1B onwards up to 1B7F, and that will define our sprites for us. Now, there are two options on the MSX, 8x8 and 16x16, and the 16x16 will actually kind of consider the tile still as an 8x8 layout almost, but it will load them in this, this order here, so it goes vertically and then horizontally. Now, when I do my virtual bitmap, my Chibico sprite that I draw to the screen as a tile map, that actually goes horizontal and then vertical. So the exporter for AcroSprite was not ideal for this, but I have added an extra exporter here. So you see, there's now a 16 by 16 sprite option, which will export in this format because the normal one would export in this format. So there you go. You can use AcroSprite Editor for all your MSX1 needs, hopefully. Anyway, so that's the options that we have there. We do have the option to magnify all the sprites, which makes them double resolution, so doubling the pixel chunkiness, so to speak. And we also have the option for 16 by 16 sprites, but these are at the screen level. So we can't have some eight by eight sprites and some 16 by 16 sprites. We can't have some double size sprites and some single size sprites. We can't do that. So that's how we can change those with these registers here. And we will have a little bit of a play with those in a moment. So how do we set the sprites? Well, what we need to do is we need to take our sprite number, we need to quadruple it by doing two RLCAs, and that's because there are four bytes per sprite. Then we set H to 1B, L to the resulting number, and then we set our VDP write address because we want to write to the address within this range to set the respective sprite. Once we've done that, all we do is we read in the bytes, outputting them to VDP out data port, and that's because it's self increments, of course. So every write we do, we will write to the next address, and that allows us to set an entire byte in one go. Now, because these examples haven't previously used sprites, the sprites were turned off. So we do have to turn them on by disabling the SPD sprite disable bit here within register eight, and that's just here. So we need to turn that on. If we don't turn the sprites on, we're never gonna see anything. Pretty obvious, probably. So how do we use this? Well, it's a slightly different to the Sega Master System Game Gear example, because we do have to define the tile data first, but we can do it with the define tiles command in the exact same way as we did with our Chibico bitmap example before. It's the same data as the pattern, tile map definitions, it's just in a different memory address. So we have to load to 3800 onwards for our sprite data. So we're loading that in here, and then we're setting the hardware sprites here using this command. This is the XY position, this is the color number, this is the tile number, I seem to be missing an R there, I don't know why. And this is the hardware sprite number, because of course we're changing a physical sprite number. So we're defining this sprite to be this tile at this position in this color, and you can see the result of that as we just did. So what if I change one of these? Well, let's try this 
to 1080 and we'll see what happens now. So you can see one part of the sprite has actually moved and the reason for that is my MSX code isn't as advanced as the other one. This one was doing offsets by adding and subtracting eight. This one's a bit cruder, so it's not doing that. But we can have some fun with this. Let's try turning on some of the other options. So what's this code here? Well, this is going to allow us to mess with the sprite options. So what we can do is we can set double size or large sprites. So let's try the double size bit and see what happens. Well, it's a bit confusing over here, but what you can see has happened is the sprites are still 8 by 8 pixels, but they're being double sized up to 16 by 16, so they look a lot bigger. Now these ones are overlapping each other, we would really need to space these out a bit more at this size, but there's another option we can try as well. If we set this bit to 1 and, multiply and run the code again, we're now using 16 by 16 sprites, so you can see now the actual each of these sprites is now the full crosshair on its own and they're all still still different colours but you'll notice they're all the complete crosshair whereas when they're in 8x8 mode they were different corners of the crosshair and the reason for this is the bottom two bits are uh, basically ignored of the tile number definition so tile 0, 1, 2 and 3 are now the same tile they were all tile 0 but tile 4 would now be a separate tile as I said before the AcroSprite editor is outputting this in the right format for this 16x16 16 16 mode and as long as we use the, the sprites in the same, in the correct order, it, they will work just fine in 8x8 mode as well. So we do have the option there. Of course, we can have any combination of these two options. So we can have 16x16, 16 16, but not big sprites if we wish. And there we go. But of course, we are going to have that limitation of just four sprites per line. So we can make the sprites bigger, but we can't put a fifth one on the same line because it's not going to be able to render them. So there we go. So it's fairly straightforward to use these simple modes within the MSX1 to get some sprites on the screen. Of course I should point out the MSX2 has much better hardware sprite modes which can do better graphics but there's also the VDP modes which I use in my other tutorial and which I used in Chibi Akamas where you can actually do bitmap copying and pasting from areas of the screen and you can use that to simulate sprites anyway and the important thing to know about hardware sprites on the MSX and the reason you might want to turn them off is using them slows down the machine by about 20% so with Chibi Akamas using the hardware sprites would have reduced the speed of the game and the hardware sprites are more limited even on the MSX2 than the software if you will call on that sprites that I used within Chibi Akamas so yeah just something to bear in mind with hardware sprites you've not just got the number limitation but on the MSX there is a performance hit as well related to them but as you can see fairly straightforward and fairly capable sprites on these systems so there we go so we've looked now at the sprites on the Master System at the Game Gear and the MSX1 so we're going to be continuing with looking at hardware sprites and next week we're going to look at the CPC Plus. CPC Plus came very late in the 8-bit evolution really and so it has much more powerful graphically capable sprites than the other systems but they do have some limitations as well so please join me next week when we have a look at that. Thanks for watching today and goodbye.